In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning, St. Paul. This morning, I would like to begin by talking about sin. It's a three-letter word. The word sin isn't used too much these days. And if it is used, it's kind of used apologetically uh, by people who don't want to cause any trouble. But I'd like to talk about sin because it'll help us understand the importance of this day. Now, there are many types of sin. There's the sin of uh, actually going and doing something that you know is wrong and doing it in spite of the consequences. Then there's the sin of uh, you do something and uh, you're not aware that your actions are going to cause the harm or damage towards another person, but you do it anyway. For example, you eat a banana, you throw the banana peel on the ground, you're not aware, your intention isn't to hurt anyone, but then Mr. Vickers is walking down the hallway, he slips on the banana peel and hurts himself. You know what I mean. So there's at least those types of sin. But there's another type of sin that you and I inherit by the fact that we are human. It's called original sin. It's the sin that's described in the Bible as the sin that was committed by Adam and Eve, eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge. There's sin in this world, there's nothing we can do, bad things happen to good people, that's original sin. Well, today is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. It's the feast that was honored, it's given to honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. She was born without original sin. Theologians throughout the ages describe it this way. It's like being thrown into a pit. You fall into the pit, you can't get out, you're covered in dirt. Someone reaches in and pulls you out. You've been saved from the pit. But you can also be saved from the pit by not allowing a person to be thrown down deep into the pit. That's what God did for Mary. Mary was born without original sin, the only human ever to walk the earth, we believe in our faith, to be given that honor. Now, God did that to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. And that's how the Feast of the Immaculate Conception fits in so perfectly with Advent. Because we're told to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Even God prepared the way by preparing Mary in advance. So we give thanks to God for loving us. We give thanks to God for redeeming us. We give thanks for Mother Mary who said yes. Mother Mary who allowed herself to be used as God's instrument to redeem us all. And we ask Mother Mary to please keep us close to the one whom she bore on Christmas Day many years ago in Bethlehem. And also today, I would like to just go down memory lane a little bit. 30 years ago today, if you were around and aware and sentient enough to know what was going on, a prophet by the name of John Lennon was killed. And I'm sure all the teachers know exactly where they were when they heard the news of John Lennon. So on this, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Paul, pray for us. Please, the Christmas food drive, we need your help. The poor in this community especially need your help. Don't turn your back. Let's do everything we can here with heart to help them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great day, St. Paul. Good morning, St. Paul. My name is Philip Mello, and here are your morning announcements. St. Paul is offering 10 free classes to prepare for the literacy test. Each class will be an hour and will take place in February. All students in grade 10, 11, and 12 who will be writing the literacy test this school year are encouraged to participate in these classes. 
registration is on a first come, first served basis. If you are interested in registering for these classes, please pick up the required form from the main office. It must be completed and returned to the main office no later than January 25th. Thursday is the last day to buy your snowball tickets and get a free dress down day on Monday. Tickets will continue to be sold on Friday and at the door, but you will no longer qualify for the dress down day on Monday. Student Council will be selling candy grams during the lunch periods in the cafeteria. They will be sold for 50 cents each or three for a dollar. You will be able to write your friends a Christmas note and have a candy, gram, a candy cane sorry, delivered to them in their homeroom classes during the last week of school. Show your friends you care and, you, and order your candy grams now. Act Now is still selling raffle tickets in the CAF during both lunches this week. Prizes to be won can be viewed in the trophy case at the main foyer. Tickets are $2 each or three for five. All proceeds will go to support families in need this Christmas season. There will be a very brief Act Now meeting this Thursday, December 9th in room 132. New members are welcome. Registration information for semester two, night school, is now available in student services. Students are encouraged to register as early as possible as space in many night school classes is limited. Night school runs February 9th to May 25th from 6.30 to 10 p.m. Registrations will begin on Monday, January 10th, 2011. Any grade 11 or 12 students who are interested in night school are encouraged to go to student services to pick up their information. The Christmas food drive will continue on this week. All of the items collected will be going to St. Dominic's Parish and Dr. Simone's Warehouse. Please bring in your food items to your period one classes. For staff and students on period one spare, please bring food items to the library. Thank you for your generosity. The University of Ottawa Information and Evening Fair can be seen via webcast at 7.30 tonight. More information can be found at uottawa.ca slash admission. All potential university applicants, be sure to pick up your PIN number and start the application process. And now, time for sports. SPAC Christmas Jolly is being held in the gym today during both lunch hours. Come and enjoy a game of volleyball and have some fun with your friends. Please make sure to eat first, as food will not be allowed in the gym. There will be a brief SPAC meeting after school today. There will be a, a girls hockey practice today after school in the CAF. If you are planning on playing in the tournament on Thursday, you need to attend this practice. Please come and support the varsity boys hockey team today at 2.30 at Cawthor Arena for their game versus Cawthor Park. Next Tuesday, the indoor training will start for girls soccer. The senior team will practice at 6.45 a.m. and the junior team after school. These practices are mandatory attendance. If you have any questions, please find one of the coaches, Ms. McTiernan, Mr. Senebria, or Mr. Gillis. And now a word from Mr. Schmidt. A good Wednesday morning to the St. Paul community. I want to use this opportunity to do a couple of very important items in this Advent Christmas season. The first is to make sure that all students know that there are many, many needy families, even students in our own community, and I would encourage you to make sure that those donations of canned goods keep coming in as per our announcement. The second item is our snowball this afternoon, uh, this Friday, and we're going to be still selling tickets today. Please make sure you take advantage of that at lunch. I do want to take a moment, though, today and pick up on a theme that our chaplain, Mr. Finnemore, talked about earlier on. The, the concept of sin is one that we understand now as Catholics, as one that has broader, more serious social implications than simply individual sin and actions. We do know that, and our own theology is explicit about what we refer to as social sin. And I do want to take this chance to tell you a little bit about what has been going on in the world and why I think it's an exciting time for students to be in high school and to learn a lot of critical lessons that we need to. 
There is social sin in as much as there is corporate and state sin, that is government sin. When governments and corporations aren't transparent, and by transparent I mean saying what they mean and meaning what they say and being honest with their citizens, we end up in a crisis. <clears throat> That's called a crisis of confidence because if you don't believe what I say, then I don't have very far to go with you on the trust scale. And we have this occurring in a major, major way right now in the world with governments with something called WikiLeaks. Now WikiLeaks, as most of you know, is a website devoted to basically sharing the historical secrets that used to exist with hundreds of millions of people in the world. And that includes you and I. And as global citizens, we have a responsibility to know what's occurring in this issue. So my first simple request for your assignment is sometime before Friday, go on to WikiLeaks and have your own look at what's occurring here. We have a lot of very, very important issues that have been made public by an individual who believes that transparency is more important than spin. What is spin? Normally spin is what governments give us when they want to divert our attention and lead us on to issues that provide sideshows for us and not substantive issues like the serious items that are occurring in the downtown city hall and also in Cancun where we're talking about global climate change. Now, I want all of our students to take advantage of this because you're learning in an era that we teachers didn't have an opportunity to learn in. It's all the more important that you take advantage of these items that are out there on the net because you will become an informed citizen and you will be making sure that the transparency I speak of is something that you value. If you value it, you will take advantage of it. So please take the opportunity. It's as simple as a click away to find out what the big brouhaha is about and why governments are now trying to railroad one individual into prison because he felt it more important to do that than to continue on with this facade and farrago of lies that we are currently living in in this particular news media world. Take advantage of it. The song of the day is Hit the Floor by Lincoln Park. What better way to start a Wednesday at St. Paul. Have a great day.